I need God with me, Emmanuel, as a mighty God who's Lord of life and Lord of all, but I need him as a prince of peace. I need him as a wonderful counselor, and I need him as a holy one, someone I worship, someone I adore. Breath of heaven, hold me together. Be forever near me. Lighten my darkness. Pour over me your holiness, for you are holy. I love that. Breath of heaven, God's spirit that comes forth. Hold me together because I'll fall apart on my own. Hold me together, be forever near me, and lighten my darkness. This is a prayer and a petition that certainly was in the mind of Mary, I believe, but it should be in all of our minds every day that we're journeying through this life. That God, through his spirit, would hold us together and lighten the darkness of this world. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That becomes a profound mystery. Mike says in the song that eternity stepped into time. And that just boggles my mind. That, that, that's like, what? Light became alive in darkness. And the, the, the Christmas incarnation miracle that we celebrate is the miracle of the love story, of the eternal, divine, transcendent God who's outside of space and time. That God steps into space and time in a final word to express his love for you and me. That's worth And then you compare it to Clark Clement Moore and his father Benjamin Moore, who passed on his love for the Lord and his love for his word, and who influenced generations to come with some of the joys of Christmas. Now, if that's the end of the Christmas story, God empties himself and takes on the form of a human and humbles himself. It's a tremendous story, but it's a story that ends in defeat. That the Christmas message is not one of defeat. It's light coming into the world and conquering the darkness. So Paul's song continues and he says, therefore also God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on Jesus the name that's reputation, that's character, the name that is above every other name, those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And Paul says, and every tongue will proclaim that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's the key to the Christmas message. We show love. We show joy at Christmas time. We feast, we share gifts. But all of that is meaningless if it's not an outpouring of understanding that the ultimate loving one is God who loved us enough to give us his son born a babe, grown up, and dying for our sins so that God can righteously declare us not guilty because the price has been paid. That's the best Christmas gift you and I can ever have. And let's not lose sight in the midst of the joy of the day, the problems of 2020, the commercialism that can associate around Christmas, let's not lose sight that God came into this world to, 
to, to save you and me out of love. It's the greatest gift. Merry Christmas. Talk to you tomorrow.